as someone who has a doctorate myself and as someone who happens to be an introvert and as someone who has happened to help thousands of people choose their dream careers or degrees, I get asked this question all the time. What is the best degree or career for introverts? And the truth is you can do any degree or career if you're an introvert and don't let anybody tell you otherwise because you're awesome. But with that being said, there are definitely some careers and some degrees that are going to be more likely to be a good choice for you if you're an introvert. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Now there's also different types of introverts that can do well in different careers. And understanding these things and having different options for different careers you can look into as an introvert can save you like 10 years of smashing your head against the wall, trying to figure out what a good career for you is. Now I remember being in school, being a shy introverted kid and having absolutely no idea what I should do with my career. And I remember there was this one time where I did a job where I served people at a racetrack and I would literally be interacting with hundreds and hundreds of really annoying people every single day because they had to wait in the super long line before they finally got to me and by the end of the day I was absolutely exhausted I remember going home laying down and basically just staring at the ceiling for an hour and then the rest of the night I only had energy to watch Netflix and play RuneScape but luckily over the years through trial and error I tried out a bunch of different jobs that I liked and some that I didn't like and I found some that were relatively good for me and these were jobs where I actually felt energized when I got home right and these were jobs where I actually enjoyed my work as well and another thing I learned is that the way that you spend time working is incredibly important, right? So if you try to get a fish to climb a tree, that's probably not going to work out very well. And if you try to get somebody who's introverted to constantly have to meet up with large groups of new people that they've never met before all day long on a day to day basis, that's probably also not going to work. And just like a fish would be able to swim very easily through the water, introverts actually have superpowers that I'm going to get into later on in the video, right? And these are powers that extroverts don't have. And this is something that's extremely important in life is that you play to your strengths. And seriously, if you're an introvert, this video is going to give you an unfair advantage and it's probably going to save you five to 10 years of struggle because most of the advice out there on what to do if you're an introvert is extremely basic and it's just not helpful at all. So if you appreciate me doing these types of introvert related videos, go ahead, gently tap that like button. It lets me know that you want me to do more of them and let's get into it right now. So the first one on this list is going to be health and pre-health related degrees. And what I mean by this is a health degree at the bachelor's level would be something like a BSN, which you would use to get into nursing. And then there's also a lot of people who will do kind of like a pre-health track, which could be a bunch of different things, but basically you're using it in order to get into a graduate level health program to become a doctor, a PA, a nurse practitioner, or a pharmacist. And you might be surprised that I said this one because as a healthcare practitioner, you do actually have to interact with a lot of different people on day-to-day -day basis but this one actually does depend heavily on what specialty you go into and this is the one that I chose myself because I got a doctorate in order to become a pharmacist and as a pharmacist you are actually expected to be a leader right by definition you got a doctorate you're expected to be a leader because you are going to be sort of above people who are pharmacy technicians for instance you're going to be checking their work making sure that everything they do is not going to harm the patient and so you might think here well if you're in healthcare you have to interact with with a bunch of people plus you're expected to be a leader in many circumstances so why the heck would introverts go into this and most people naturally see leaders as being extroverts and this isn't surprising as in the book quiet the power of introverts by susan kane she basically argues that modern society is built almost entirely around extroversion in school systems for example desks are purposely arranged in such a way to facilitate group projects and high levels of interaction and activity and most teachers believe that students should be extroverts and then when you graduate graduate school and you get into the workforce, you're expected to be extroverted because you have to promote yourself, right? You have to promote your personal brand in order to rise up within a company. And as you have probably seen, if you worked in companies before, a lot of the time, the most capable people are not the ones who end up getting the promotions. It's the people who self promote quite a bit. It's the people who network with others. It's the people who are proactive about becoming leaders in certain situations. And by the way, this is a great book. If you're an introvert, you should definitely read it because it's going to help you understand your strengths and and it's gonna help you get past all of the frustrations of being an introvert in the modern world, right? So I have it on my Kindle here. I don't have a physical copy because I'm kind of like traveling around a lot, but yeah, definitely recommend uh, reading this book. So when I was going through pharmacy school and I was working in healthcare,
healthcare, I was actually shocked at how many other introverts were in healthcare as well. And many of them were in these leadership type positions like doctor, pharmacist, PA, nurse practitioner, etc. Right, I thought I was gonna be the only introvert there, but what I found is introverts actually have superpowers in many cases. So for instance, introverts tend to have extremely strong one-on-one -on -one communication skills. And part of that is because they're good listeners. So if you're an introvert, you probably have no issues talking with one of your best friends in a one-on-one -on -one situation. If you're anything like me, I have no issue with that. Where I have a bit of an issue is when I meet a bunch of new people and I'm in a large group and most of them I don't know. That tends to drain my energy and make me extremely tired. Introverts also seem to be very introspective and self-reflective. So, you know, in healthcare, there's always something new that you can learn. So even if on a technical level, you know everything about a certain disease state, for instance, let's like, let's say, you know everything about diabetes. There's always more that you can do. For instance, patients probably hear a hundred different times from their doctor, nurses, etc., that they need to go ahead and exercise, right? They need to go out and walk 20 minutes a day. But if you're not able to sell them on that, if you're not able to convince them to do that, then you're not doing as good of a job as you could as a healthcare practitioner, right? So you might know everything about healthcare, everything about diabetes, everything about exercise, but if you're not able to communicate that in a way that the patient understands and convince them of why they should do it in order to improve their own health and improve their own outcomes, then you kind of have failed. And so for instance, something you could do that really resonates with people is tell them a story of a different patient that you had that was in a very similar situation to them. And they started walking every day for 20 minutes. They just, you know, go walk their dog, for instance, every single day and they reported losing 20 pounds, they had better mental health, they felt better, they felt more energized all day long, and they had all these different benefits. And then you explain to them kind of like the health and the technical reasons behind that, and they're gonna resonate with that much more because of the fact that you told a story. Storytelling is essential to good communication. Not only does it convince them on an emotional level, but they're also able to actually remember it because the human brain remembers things in stories. So that's just one example of skills that you can work on as a healthcare worker to get better results results for your patients. And this is something that if you're an introvert, you would probably think about, right? You would probably think about, huh, the pharmacists and the PAs that get the best results for their patients are good storytellers. They're good communicators. How can I become a better communicator as well and sell my patients on why they should do X, Y, or Z? Introverts also tend to be much better at just sitting down and really diving into a patient profile to figure out, you know, if there's any dangers in the profile, to figure out what, you know, can be done to make things better and to solve any problems that the patient might have. So yeah, there are absolutely superpowers that introverts have that extroverts don't in healthcare. Now, when it comes to the numbers, if you've been watching my channel, you know that healthcare degrees and healthcare careers are some of the best out there. I would say personally, healthcare occupations are probably second best behind technology related careers. And they're actually growing faster than any other type of career out there. So according to BLS, they're projected to grow about 13% over the next 10 years. And the median annual salary for healthcare workers is $75,000 dollars a year. Now let's just take nurse as an example. So this is a bachelor level degree. There's about 210,000 results. If you type in nurse, then sort by entry level on LinkedIn. That is a lot of demand for nurses. If you look it up on Glassdoor, nurses make about $70,000 a year. But keep in mind, that's just the entry level role. There's a lot of other roles nurses can go into. A lot of the time, nurses actually end up in leadership positions within hospitals. So in conclusion, I actually did enjoy working in healthcare before the whole um, <clears throat> cough, cough situation happened. Once that happened, it did become kind of a nightmare of illogical thinking. Uh, it was highly politicized and it became kind of all about politics instead of helping people, which is the reason that I got into it in the first place. You know, it became about following the science and listening to the scientists and the doctors except the ones that had a different opinion than the most powerful people in the world, which were controlling everything at the time. You know, anybody who had a different opinion was misinformation. They got blocked, banned, censored, and canceled. And rightfully so, because how dare they have a different opinion than the most powerful people in the country? That would be like speaking truth to power, which is a part of, you know, freedom of speech which is a terrible thing. But yeah, corruption in the uh, US healthcare system is a topic for another video. Next one we're gonna talk about is statistics and mathematics degrees. And if you're really good at math and statistics and you enjoy it, you will probably never be without job opportunities. Why? Because you're rare. Most people are not good at math and of the ones who are good at it, a lot of them don't really enjoy it. And of course, not all introverts are great at math, but I have noticed that people that are good at math do tend to be introverted. Now I'm personally good, but not amazing at math. And there's some parts of math that I just cannot stand. For 
instance, there was this advanced statistics class that I took where it was right after my lunch. And typically I will actually, you know, sit at the front of the class because, hey, you're paying all this money, you might as well get a front row seat, right? But in this class, the teacher was so dry and the material was just presented in such a boring way that I would constantly just be dozing off in class. Like I would be making eye contact with the teacher and just like, ooh, I, my head would be dropping like every five seconds and I didn't want her to hate me. So I decided to actually sit kind of towards the middle so she didn't notice me literally falling asleep almost every day. Now, if we get in the numbers, mathematics is actually ranked number 22 on my college degree ranker and that's out of 900 plus degrees. So when you look at the numbers, it does rank really well. So statistician, for instance, on LinkedIn at the entry level, there's about 12,000 results and there's a bunch of different career paths you can go into. A lot of people will go into finance, for instance, and become financial analysts. That one on LinkedIn, there's about 72,000 results. And if you look on Glassdoor, statisticians make about $85,000 a year and financial analysts make 73,000. And again, that's just the entry level. There's tons of positions out there where you can make more money than that. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here, and this is something I talk about a lot in other videos, is you want to focus on going into the career, right? Not picking the degree. The degree is simply just a tool that you can use to get to your goal. And the goal is a career. And in many cases, depending on the career you want to get into, you won't need a degree. And that segues perfectly into the next one on the list, which is a marketing degree. So the most valuable skill in marketing is digital marketing. And this is something where if you look at curriculums of marketing degrees, and I've done this in other videos, you'll see that they barely even touch on digital marketing. And I've shown many different examples of people on this channel who have been able to get into digital marketing without getting marketing degrees. Now, why is marketing such a valuable skill? Well, for one, it pairs with any other skill. For two, it teaches you human psychology. And for three, if you want to go into higher level positions or you wanna start your own business, it's going to teach you how to monetize that, right? So it's gonna teach you how to actually market products so you can make money from good ideas. You can make money from solving other people's problems in the form of a product or a service. And one thing that my business partners and I have noticed after helping like thousands of different people is for some reason, digital marketing tends to be great for introverts. So for instance, Ashley was an artistic yet introverted person who wanted to figure out how she can get a really good job so she could pursue her artistic interests on the side. And after trying a bunch of different things that didn't work for her, she started searching across the internet and she stumbled upon digital marketing. And after researching digital marketing for a little bit, she basically found that SEO or search engine optimization was the right choice for her. And SEO is basically how you can get your website ranked on the top of Google search. And by the way, I did an entire interview with her, which you can check out right here. So when it comes to the numbers, marketing actually came out as my number 24th ranked degree. Again, that's 24 out of over 900 different degrees that I analyzed. And if you type in digital marketing, you search by entry level on LinkedIn, you're going to see 89,000 results. And if you type in digital marketing associate on Glassdoor, you'll see they make about $53,000 a year. If you type in SEO specialist, they make around 59,000. And remember, these are the entry level jobs. These are jobs that you can get actually without a college degree. There's many other jobs you can move into within a few years that make it up to the six figure level. So in conclusion, digital marketing is probably the skill that I recommend learning the most. For some reason, it applies to just about all types of personalities out there and people just tend to have really good outcomes with it. And this is especially good for introverts that aren't good at math and they don't want to learn how to code or go into technology. This can be a phenomenal option. And there's actually a free training, which I'll link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below that'll go over the different types of digital marketing. Computer science is going to be next on the list. And this is one that I, of course, have talked about a ton on this channel. And this one tends to be dominated by introverts. So now one of my favorite people on the internet, Naval Ravikant, actually had a tweet storm where he talked about skills that are incredibly valuable. And he basically said that the most valuable skills are ones that you can leverage. So he says, fortune requires leverage. Business leverage comes from capital, people, and products with no marginal cost of replication. And the two that he gave in his example are code and media. And what exactly is leverage? Well, Archimedes said, if you give me a place to stand and a lever long enough, I will move the world. Leverage is where you're one person, but you can do the work of 10, 20, maybe even 100 or 1,000 people. And then Naval goes ahead and he splits leverage into two different categories. So there's permissioned leverage and permissionless leverage. So he says, capital and labor are permissioned leverage. Everyone is chasing capital, but someone has to give it to you. Everyone is trying to lead, but someone has to follow you. And so he basically says that the two types of leverage that are permissionless are code 
in media. And media is kind of what I'm doing now. I'm broadcasting this to everybody in the world. It could potentially get a million views, probably not, but you know, it could potentially do that. And then code is software development, essentially. You can write a piece of code that a million people use. You could write a piece of software or make a website that millions of people can use, and it's just one person that created it. Now, there aren't that many skills out there where you can do this, not even close to it, and coding is one of them. So computer science actually ranks as my number one degree on my college degree ranker out of over 900 degrees. Now, if you look up software developer on LinkedIn at the entry level, you'll see 162,000 results. And if you look up software developer on Glassdoor, again, at the entry level, $95,000 a year. So ridiculously high pay, especially for an entry level job. Now, there is one small problem with this degree, even though it does objectively rank number number one when it comes to the numbers, this is one where you can actually get into it without a college degree. So there are other ways of getting into software development without getting a computer science or a software engineering degree. Now, a lot of people who get into it do get computer science or software engineering degrees, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's definitely not a scam, and it's definitely worth the money. It gives you a good ROI. But with that being said, for the right type of person, you might be able to teach yourself coding and get into it without getting a degree, right? There's no accrediting body here that says you have to have have this degree in order to become a software developer. Also, this one absolutely can be done remote. I know there's a ton of people on this channel, probably over 90% who want either a remote or semi-remote job. And so what I did is I created a video called the remote jobs tier list that goes over the best remote jobs. And you can check that out right here. Next one on the list is going to be an information technology degree. Now, going back to our analogy about leverage, information technology is basically a way to leverage technology with within a business. So it's basically the technology side of the business's infrastructure. And it's a way to make human beings as well as your business on a whole more efficient. And so it's another incredibly valuable skill. And it's also another one where you're going to spend a lot of time working by yourself. And if you are going to communicate with people, it's usually going to be in a one on one setting. And if it is with a group, it's probably going to be with people that you already know and are familiar with. And this is one where we've had great success getting people into IT roles. So for instance, uh, we were able to get some somebody in in 10 days and 14 days. And I actually interviewed both of those people on the channel. And yes, I literally mean they went from zero experience to getting a job in 10 days and 14 days. And as a degree, information technology is ranked 15th out of over 900 degrees. And I would say this is probably the easiest way to get into the technology industry other than tech sales. Tech sales is probably a little bit easier, but a lot of introverts probably do not want to be like cold calling people on the phone trying to do sales. So if you're an introvert, this is is probably the easiest way to get your foot in the door in the technology industry. Now, there are a ton of different super random careers you can get into. One of them is going to be information technology specialist, and there's 16,000 results at the entry level on LinkedIn. And if you look up information technology specialist on Glassdoor, you'll see they make about $61,000 a year. So yeah, IT is probably the easiest way to get your foot in the door. I interviewed Antoine on this channel, and he basically started off in IT. Then he went into kind of like an IT logistics type role. Then he went into software development, then he transitioned into tech sales, and now he makes over $500,000 a year. So yeah, IT is a great place to kind of break into tech, get your foot in the door. Once you're in, it's very easy for you to move around to different roles. So next on the list is going to be an accounting degree. And this is one that my amazing girlfriend, Lucy, who's standing over there, got herself. And she is also an introvert. And accounting is extremely important for basically any type of business out there. Now, it does tend to be relatively number heavy. So there is math, but the math you use tends to be extremely basic. And it's more about kind of organizing things and then having them like easily accessible and in such a way where it's easy to communicate data to other people. You're probably going to be using tools like QuickBooks and Excel quite a bit. Now, a lot of the work tends to involve stuff that you can basically just do on your own. And if you are going to be communicating with other people, it's typically going to be in a one on one setting. And if you're communicating with people in groups, it's usually going to be people that you already know. So it tends to be really great for introverts. Now, when it comes to the numbers, accounting comes in at number 34 on my college degree ranker out of over 900 degrees. If you type in accountant at the entry level, there's over 54,000 results in the United States. And if you type in accountant on Glassdoor, you're going to see $59,000 a year. And remember, that's just the entry level. I interviewed the financial controller, uh, Brian, on the channel, and he makes, I believe, over $250,000, $300,000 a year. So that's kind of a higher level accountant role, and that's something you can get into. Next one on the list is going to be engineering. And this is one that, of course, is a great 
great degree that you can get. It's also brutally difficult. Now, engineering is actually the degree that creates the most millionaires as well as the most CEOs out of any type of degree out there. So for instance, Jeff Bezos of Amazon actually got an electrical engineering and computer science degree. And one big reason for that, in my opinion, is that engineering is all about practical problem solving. So this tends to work really well when you're trying to solve problems in the real world. Practical problem solving is basically the heart of entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is basically where you're solving other people's problems in the form of a product or a service. Now, the funny thing is most engineers are introverts as well. So this kind of goes against the stereotype that you have to be an extrovert in order to be a good leader. And this is another thing that Susan Cain talks about in her book, Quiet the Power of Introverts. She argues that in some cases, extroverted behavior and people blindly following charismatic leaders is what leads to many of the disasters in the world, such as the fall of Enron and the 2008 financial crisis. She also talked about a study from Brigham Young where they found that there wasn't much of a difference in charismatic leaders and how well they did when they studied 128 CEOs of major companies. And she also talks about some research in the book that suggests that introverts in many cases are actually better as leaders. So for instance, as an introvert, if you're managing proactive employees, in many cases, that can actually be better. Leaders that are introverted are more likely to listen to suggestions from proactive employees rather than dominating the situation like many extroverts do. So it's kind of a yin and yang type situation where if you're an introvert, you tend to be more introspective, you tend to be better at listening to people. And if you have a bunch of people who are kind of like proactive who are working under you, they kind of just let them do their thing. And this is actually exactly what I do in my business. I just hire really smart people and then I just kind of leave them alone and let them do their thing and only give them support when they reach out to me and they need it. And she argues that in many cases, this leads to better outcomes, and I would happen to agree with her. So as you can imagine, engineering absolutely dominates at the top of my college degree ranker list. It's probably like 15 out of the top 30 or something like that. So for instance, if you type in mechanical engineer on LinkedIn at the entry level, there's 40,000 results. You type in civil engineer, there's 50,000. And chemical engineer, there's 23,000. Mechanical engineers make $81,000 a year. Civil engineers make 78,000. And chemical engineers make a whopping 102,000. So yeah, engineers make great money. A lot of them are extroverts and it can be a great choice for the right type of person. But with that being said, engineering is absolutely brutal. So keep that in mind because it's one of the hardest degree paths that you can go for. Next, let's talk about a social science, which is economics. And you probably didn't think that I was going to include a social science on the list. So economics can lead to a bunch of really high paying jobs and it can be a great opportunity for introverts. Introverts tend to be highly introspective, as I talked about before, and they spend a lot of time kind of thinking about how the world works and thinking about how different systems interact with each other. And understanding basic economics, especially microeconomics, is an amazing way that you can sort of fundamentally understand how the world works. Now, if you type in economist on LinkedIn at the entry level, you're going to see 111,000 results. But with that being said, typically to become an economist, you're going to need at least a master's level degree. But with just a bachelor's, there's other roles that you can go for. So for instance, financial risk analyst is one you could go for, and that's about 6,000 results. You could also become an investment analyst, and that one's about 10,000 results. And if you look on Glassdoor, economists make $99,000 a year, financial risk analysts make 82,000, and investment analysts make 99,000. So yeah, economics is another really good one. Keep in mind with this one that you really do need to plan out your career, right? This is not one where you can just go into it and kind of know that when you graduate, you're going to be good to go, kind of like an engineering degree. You really need to plan things out. And speaking of planning your college degree out, I actually have an entire video dedicated to that that's going to show you step by step exactly how you can choose the perfect degree for you. And I'll put that right here. Definitely check it out.